bear with me, guys. I know this is the longest chapter we have in the course. Central nervous system, guys. This is kind of important, right? What controls everything that we can describe in the human body. So, and believe me, this is only an overview, the big picture. But let's integrate. Let's put what we have said, everything together, okay? Now, if you have followed me, you know, uh, keep up with me during the explanations, you will be able to understand this at first glance. This is a, a moment that you can, you know, uh, use to realize where your weak areas, go back, watch those videos again, replay, and come back again. I'll be waiting for you here again. Um, so, the information we have said that in the central nervous system, in the nervous system in general, it travels in both ways. The sensory and the motor. The sensory and the motor information. Sensory on the back, motor in the front. Sensory and motor, right? So we are going to explain there's two pathways. There are thousands of pathways. But we're going to describe in general, in general, these have a lot of uh, uh, bearings. But in general, ascending fibers or ascending pathways that bring sensory information from a receptor to the nervous system, central nervous system. And in the next slide, we're going to describe the descending pathways. Now, in the ascending sensory pathway, we start at the receptor. Uh, in this example, because we are so far covering only the somatic uh, uh, part of the body. So the receptor can be located on the surface of the skin. In here, this is a touch receptor detecting the touch of a feather. This is a proprioceptor, and this one too, located on the capsule, the joint capsule, and this one on the skeletal muscle. Now, this information, okay, uh, detected by the receptor, is transmitted by a sensory neuron that is located on the dorsal root ganglion. Now, the fibers of those neurons enter through the dorsal root into the posterior to reach an interneuron located on the posterior gray horn of the spinal cord. In here, we're going to meet the second neuron, right? This is the first neuron. Now, this second neuron ascends so far in the same side of the spinal cord and decusates, and this changes depending on the receptors, but it will eventually cross to the other side if I'm receiving the sensation on the right side, it's going to go to the left side, like it's shown in here. It can, that decusation, that crossover can happen at the level of the spinal cord or usually at the medulla oblongata, okay? Now, now we are, well, this information was felt on the left uh, side and is being crossed over, or delivered to the right side of the, the brain stem. So it sends the medulla oblongata, passes through the pons, then the, uh, the midbrain, and remember, every sensory information except by the smell has to stop by the thalamus and the diencephalon. So right there, we stop on the thalamus, and we meet a third neuron. And this second neuron in a synapse with the third neuron that finally delivers the information to the cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex, which is only the gray matter, right? What part of the cerebral cortex? Where is the part of the cerebral cortex where all the general sensory information arrives? To the parietal lobe, right? specifically in the post-central gyrus, 
in the primary somatosensory cortex. Now that this information has reached these higher levels, here is when we realized, oh, somebody's tickling me and my foot with a feather, or I'm stretching my skeletal muscle. Well, this one doesn't reach that level, but stretching uh, of movement, uh, conscious movements of skeletal muscles and joint capsules. That's when we realize what's going on. Good? Now, let's describe now the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there's a mistake in there. Uh, descending, whoop, whoop, descending pathway, okay? And these ones are going to start up here and we're gonna go down to deliver what? A motor command. A motor to get a command that is going to target, in this example, a somatic organ, which is a skeletal muscle. If the target was uh, the heart of the smooth muscle tissue in the gland uh, or in any other organ, these will be part of the autonomic nervous system or visceral motor division of the peripheral nervous system. I hope you follow me on that. Okay, so in here we're going to start with the first neuron. We have an upper neuron and a lower motor neuron, as simple as that. The upper motor neuron is located where? What part of the cerebral cortex, in what, which part of the cerebral cortex, the motor commands are issued? in the frontal lobe, precisely in the, and remember, okay, precisely in the uh, precentral gyrus, which is the primary motor cortex. Now, remember that at these levels, we have the, uh, the motor and the sensory homunculus, the guy with the big lips and the huge face, big tongue and huge hands. So it's going to get specifically to the area you know, uh, uh, belonging to the hand, to the whatever you are targeting on. Okay, so we're right here, so, uh, upper motor neuron. This neuron is, it goes straight forward, doesn't stop anywhere, okay? This is a pyramidal neuron and goes all the way down. It passes through the, uh, the midbrain, same thing, pons, medulla oblongata reaches the spinal cord. Remember that here at the medulla oblongata, it crosses to the other side. So the right, the right serial hemisphere is controlling the left, uh, the contraction of the muscles located on the left side, and the left serial hemisphere is controlling the contraction of the skeletal muscles on the right side. Okay, let's keep this in mind. So it crosses, it decusates the information. You can see there are some that they don't because there are other ways that we're not going to explain. But uh, usually they do, again, at the level of the medulla oblongata or any level of the spinal cord. The thing is go to the lateral uh, side. In here, this motor neuron the upper motor neuron is going to synapse with an interneuron or not. Sometimes we have only the upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. And the lower motor neuron is located right here. We remember, remember we described this in the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord. The fibers, the axons of these motor neurons, so these motor fibers, exit the spinal cord following the anterior root or ventral root and exit through the spinal cord and travels the distance that it needs to travel to go all the way to its target organ and activate, stimulate the contraction of this skeletal muscle. Okay, so in here we summarize the ascending sensory pathway and the descending motor pathway. Now we have I promise. I think it's just two more videos to uh, explain how the entire, I left it to the end, I think it's easier 
to describe how the entire nerve central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord is protected. So we're going to describe the bony protection, the meninges, meningitis, and the, the cerebrospinal fluid. See you in the last videos.